Hello, welcome to Tech Cubicle on SAP. I'm Daryl Griffiths and this is my weekly 180 where I spend 180 seconds on the latest techie news that impacts the world of SAP. At the end, I'll pick my favorite to review in a little more detail in the cubicle. In my SAP techie news this week, the register celebrates World 404 Day. When I first accessed the page, it wouldn't load, but after refreshing, I couldn't believe my eyes. World 404 Day exists because, well, it was the 4th of 04. Who comes up with these things? Just like the web pages, I bet we'll never find them. Did SAP take part in this? Let me know in the comments down below. E3 ran a story on SAP Security Bridge. Anyone that has been to any physical SAP events over the past year or so will have more than likely seen their product offering. The article talks about Security Bridge acquisition of Protect 4S and how the Security Bridge Research Lab has found and reported over 100 zero-day vulnerabilities in SAP software. This company is one of the number helping to keep your SAP landscape safe. If you know anything about cybersecurity practices, you may know SAP offer a bug bounty program, and if the 2022 document is still correct, it's not a bad reward. I've linked to the SAP document from 2022 in the description. The only problem is the 2021 SAP community page I've linked to has a broken link right at the end, which takes us to, yes, you guessed it, a 404 page. Happy world 404 day. Except it's not. That was a good few days ago now. There is also a link to the S4HANA Cloud bug bounty announcement, which details that they use the Bug Crowd platform, require signed NDAs, and also allow select security researchers only operating under this pay for performance model. An article on the IBM Newsroom page talks about the AI enabled ICT Workforce Consortium. This is a group led by Cisco and including Accenture, Eightfold, Google, IBM, Indeed, Intel, Microsoft, and SAP with the aim of understanding the impact of AI on IT jobs and mitigating the impact by offering upskilling for the most affected jobs. In total, they will evaluate 56 ICT job roles and provide training recommendations for those jobs predicted to be impacted by AI. The objective is to help over 95 million individuals around the world over the next 10 years. SAP's individual target is to upskill 2 million people across the globe by 2025. And I don't know about you, but I feel they may hit the target early, judging by the number of people with the Gen AI SAP badge on LinkedIn. On ERP Today, an article about the JIVS Information Management Platform product from Data Migration International Group highlights how it can be used to ease migration to s for hana from legacy products, using an innovative one-click approach. I checked over the DMI company webpage and they offer a number of products to help with S4HANA migration through offloading of data before brownfield and even bluefield migration, or complete archiving of data in a way that no longer needs an SAP system to access it. This specific solution also suggests green credentials by allowing consolidation of old legacy systems into a single, more efficient archive. Maybe this solution will become more prevalent in the coming years as we inch closer to 2027 and 2030. I've put the link to the article and the website in the description. Lastly, the first quarterly release in 2024 of the SAP BTP SDKs for Android, iOS and Mobile Development Kit. These SDKs are used for building native apps for mobile devices that interact with BTP application SAP mobile services. The SDKs include features for making the mobile experience as consumer-friendly as any mobile experience, with the consistency of the SAP Fury user experience and the compatibility with the mobile device's navigational interface designs and features. I'll put the link to the notes and documents for the release in the description down below. My favorite item this week is World 404 Day. It takes a light-hearted approach to ensuring that people across the world understand the technology base that underpins our modern connected world. Way back in 1996, just before I started my career in IT, RFC 1945 was released. In this RFC was the specification for HTTP 1.0. It defined the way HTTP headers would work, which allowed web pages to be cached, which would reduce bandwidth requirements on those teeny tiny 56K modem connections. As well as caching, the headers also allowed for things like cookies, which years later we would resent because of the click fest of cookie acceptance prompts that would be needed to fend off GDPR-related lawsuits. Also included in HTTP 1.0 were status codes. There were 14 in total. We all know a 200 OK status code means a web page was successfully accessed. All codes in the 200 to 299 range are success codes. Codes in the 300 to 399 range are redirection codes. And finally, we have the codes in the 400 to 499 range. 
These are the codes that indicate client errors, which are errors that have been returned from the web server and handled by the web browser. The client has done something or not done something and the web server has thrown back the request. Out of that range, we have the 404 error. Page not found is the message associated with that error and is indicating that the web server had a good look but just could not find it. It tells the web browser that it must be looking for something that doesn't exist. Wrong URL, bad URL or broken link are other terms you may have seen in some places. Link rot is an actual thing and defined as ever increasing number of broken links on the World Wide Web over time. We all know that Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web and the HTTP protocol, but you know, he did have help in this. In the RFC 1945, you will see the name of Henrik Nielsen, who also worked at CERN. According to Wikipedia, Nielsen shared an office at CERN with Hakon Lee, creator of Cascading Style Sheets. After helping invent and formalize HTTP at the W3C, Nielsen went to work for Microsoft and was embedded into a project that was forming a new protocol called SOAP, Simple Object Access Protocol. The SAP Exchange Infrastructure product was the predecessor to the SAP Process Integration product, which is now known as Process Orchestration, or SAP PO. SOAP is one of the primary message protocols used in the SAP XI, PI, and PO products that we use today. So if it wasn't for those three guys from CERN, we wouldn't be talking about SAP BTP at all. Happy belated 404 day, everyone. As always, reference links are in the description down below. Drop me a comment, give the video a thumbs up, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and Timothy.